If you've spent enough time in the American Southwest, chances are you've noticed the abundance of ruins made by the hands of those lost to history. Most of the structures are in the centuries and sometimes even into the thousands of years old. We've made many videos over the years of prehistoric ruins in the American Southwest and have learned a lot about the different cultures that once thrived in these deserts. Today we'll share three ruins from three distinct pre-Columbian cultures. We'll explore the dazzling architecture of the ancient Sinagua culture in northern Arizona at Montezuma Castle and Montezuma Well. Next, we'll travel to near the northern border of New Mexico to see the amazing remains of the ancestral Puebloans at Aztec National Monument. We'll round off our tour with a look at the lesser-known Sears K ruins north of Phoenix, Arizona, high atop a hilltop in the beautiful Tonto National Forest. There are many sites like these across the American Southwest, and these three are among our favorites. Join us today as we take a trip back in time and explore some of the cultures of the ancient American Southwest. Near the center of the state of Arizona are the remnants of a culture that had been living in the region since as early as 650 AD. Montezuma Castle and nearby Montezuma Well represent some of the finest examples of Southern Sanaguan culture, the name given to the culture that once dwelled here. The earliest residents lived in pit houses, such as the remains of one that you can see at our first location. You can see lots of notches and holes here in this excavation, uh, where I would assume they would have had like wooden poles. This would have been a roofed structure, like a thatch roof or something like that, uh, from a farming community, maybe close to a thousand years ago, hundreds of years ago for sure, if not more. Around 1050 AD, the Sinagua began to construct cliffside dwellings here at Montezuma Castle. The main compound is a 20-room multi-story structure that served as the living quarters for multiple families. A diorama depicts day-to-day -day life within those walls, which would consist of scenes very recognizable to us as modern humans. Montezuma Castle is a misleading name to give this ancient apartment complex, however, as the culture responsible for this architecture had no connection to the Aztecs or its emperors. It's a name given by some of the early visitors of this curiosity. The Sanagua were a distinctly different group, and like other contemporary southwestern cultures of their time, they specialized in farming. This allowed them to stay put in one place for longer periods of time and construct amazing buildings, as well as other innovations. The abilities of ancient farmers like the Sanagua should not be underestimated, as evidenced by one innovation you can see at neighboring Montezuma Well. Montezuma Well is just a few miles away from the cliffside structure and is quite an impressive sight on its own. The well is actually an old sinkhole that collapsed, revealing a deep pool of water that originates from higher elevation snowmelt and moves to the well over the course of thousands of years. If you look carefully, you could see the leftover architecture of the Sanagua around the walls of the well. And there is more of what we would expect when we come to see the Sanawan culture, these uh, cliff dwellings, like right here. You can see several out there, either granaries or residences, I'm not sure. The innovation we want to point out is actually outside of the well on the backside where the water drains out. This is an amazing thing to think about. Number one, think about this well, this sinkhole, kind of on the other side of this, water draining out of that. Right here, 10% uh, recycled per day. That water took 10,000 years to get into the thing and then finally let, be let out here after 10,000 years. The ancients used this spot to construct small irrigation canals to transport the water miles away to grow crops like corn and beans. The more you study ancient cultures like the Sanagua and the innovations they used to make living life out in the desert a little easier, 
the more you realize that they were people just like you and me. I know if I had to live in the hot southwest back then, living in a cool apartment complex up on a cliff is where I'd want to pass my time. Montezuma Castle and Well are both easily accessible and right off a major interstate. Even if you just want to pop your head in and see the cliff dwelling for a few minutes, it does not take long and would enrich any visit to the beautiful state of Arizona. What do Montezuma Castle and Aztec Ruins National Monument have in common? Well, both have names related to the Aztecs, but in reality, one of the few things they have in common is that neither actually have anything to do with the Aztecs. Aztec Ruins National Monument is about a six hour drive from Montezuma Castle and is located in the northwestern part of New Mexico, very near to the Colorado border. Around the same time frame the Sanagua were constructing their fantastic cliffside apartment complex, the ancestral Puebloans were busy building their great houses. The best examples you may be acquainted with are the great houses of Chaco Canyon. Aztec Ruins National Monument's West Ruin is an example of one such great house, and is considered the largest great house outside of Chaco Canyon, which is about 75 miles south of here. Aztec Ruins consists of about 400 rooms and 30 kivas. Interestingly, modern archaeology believes these great houses were not so much homes for people, but rather large communal centers that served as gathering places, or places for ceremonies and trade. Another function was storage. Like their Sanaguan contemporaries, the ancestral Puebloans were master farmers in arid regions. The ancestral Puebloans knew how to read the sky and celestial events like the solstices. They have calendars in the area, um, carved into the rocks, and other walls in these great houses mark other celestial events. For example, this particular great house is also aligned on an east-west line. I think that back wall, perfectly east-west. And I saw a video that talked about at certain times of the year on solstices um, or equinoxes. I'm, I can't remember exactly which one. The moon on the right days will, will rise right above like one of those walls pointing in that direction or maybe set there. These people really knew their stuff. And that's just getting started. In fact, as you would find at nearby locations like Chaco, much of the architecture of the ancestral Puebloans is aligned to measure and mark these events. The reconstructed Great Kiva at Aztec is a good example of this. During the summer solstice, the sun rises and aligns with the Great House to create a doorway of light inside the Kiva. During the winter solstice, the setting sun creates a similar effect on the opposite side. It's believed that the ancestral Puebloans used this knowledge to know the most optimal time to plant or harvest crops. It's likely that this was tied into the religion and ceremonies of the people too. At Aztec National Monument, you can take a self-guided tour of the Great House and get a great visualization of what an ancestral Puebloan Great House is all about. As you tour the grounds, you'll get a feel for the intricacy of the Pueblo. The masonry is very deliberate and sturdy and has stood the test of centuries. What's even more impressive is that inside some of the structures, you can see the original wood laid by the hands of the builders almost a thousand years ago. The current residents still appreciate the cool habitat the builders created for them centuries ago. So excuse me, Mr. or Mrs. Bat, but I just wanted to say that you're hanging on centuries old wood. Did you know that? You have good taste. To us, the quality of what you see at Aztec is as good as what you would see at Chaco, but at Aztec, the reconstructed Kiva helps to visualize the structure as it was in its prime. If you want to experience what a contemporary great house of the Chacoan culture was like, without traversing the long and bumpy and dusty roads to Chaco Canyon, we can highly recommend Aztec as a worthy alternative. Or if you're like us, Aztec is the perfect pairing with a trip to Chaco to supplement your visual understanding of ancestral Puebloan great houses. The final location we wanna share is a lesser known spot without a visitor center, but perhaps the easiest to reach of all. In the desert foothills north of Phoenix, Arizona, just within the boundary of the Tonto National Forest is another ruin from another culture who were contemporaries of the first two, yet distinctly different. The Hohokam were another culture that had mastered farming. 
One of the greatest achievements of these people was the construction of large irrigation canals across much of the ground covering the modern metropolitan Phoenix area. This is a really amazing map of the Salt River area here in Phoenix, and it shows you all of the various sites, the ones that have platform mounds, the ones that had Pueblo structures, ball courts, um, all over the place here in Phoenix. You can see how extensive the network of villages and residences were. By the year 800 AD, as the irrigation networks had become well established and small villages were evolving into towns, some of the Ho'okam moved to the foothills north of the valley, perhaps to enjoy the rich and varied resources the foothills had to offer, as well as decreased competition. Over the next couple centuries, the people of the foothills began to separate themselves into localized cultures known as traditions. The people that constructed Sears K are thought to be from a northern tradition. One of the characteristics of this tradition is that they constructed what appear to be hilltop fortresses made with high defensive walls and commanding views of areas below in virtually all directions. And just look at the views these people would have had. I mean, if you had to pick somewhere to live back then, this is prime real estate to me. There are many remains like Sears K scattered throughout the desert foothills, and Sears K is perhaps the most accessible of them all. The reason why this tradition of Hohokam culture constructed defensive forts like Sears K is not definitively known, but a leading theory is that as time went on and the Hohokam population increased, in combination with long-term drought, the river traditions would have been forced to expand their interest into more resource-rich areas like the foothills. This would have caused conflict with those that have made the foothills their home for generations. The Sears K site was inhabited between 1050 AD until about 1200 AD, inside of which time it evolved into a five compound hilltop fortress. As you walk up the relatively short hike to the top of the hill, you'll encounter some of the small groupings of homes where people lived. Some of them might be mistaken for random piles of rock rubble. Like, I think there were more, and this is probably more indicative of what this looked like when the Anglos were out here discovering this. But as you'll see, there are lots of nicely reconstructed ones where archeologists took the care to reassemble some of this. Now, I don't know if this particular one was reassembled or just in its natural state. At one point, they were probably not too unlike the Ho'okam homes they have on display at Pueblo Grande in Phoenix. As you progress up the hill, you'll encounter the most interesting features. The hilltop consists of a large courtyard and what were likely storage room and communal areas. All of this is surrounded by a protective wall. It's thought that the hilltop could have served as a haven in times of distress for those living lower down on the hill. One of the most interesting features at Sears K is an oval room, which is unique in that all others here have square corners. It's named the Mystery Room, and theories include that it's simply a style of earlier architecture. One interesting observation that we've made is, the doorway faces directly east, facing a strange rock monolith. Similar to how their contemporaries, the ancestral Puebloans, align much of their architecture to solar and lunar cycles, is the Mystery Room an example of a similar practice? Could Sears K have doubled as a celestial observatory? Like the rest of the cultures we studied today, the Ho'okam culture and its various traditions would eventually disappear, leaving the true intent behind Sears K a mystery. Perhaps one day a discovery will reveal new details about these people, but until then, we can stand atop the fortress here at Sears K and peer across the same landscape the people that lived here almost a thousand years ago saw. We hope that our tour of these three ruins of ancient North American culture sparked your curiosity to want to learn more. We've made many full-length videos throughout the years of our visits to these sites, as well as many others. If you want to learn more about one of these fascinating places, check out our full-length videos. We have the links down below. Or if you're in a binging mood, we also have a playlist of all the sites we've ever visited, including those you saw today. If you want to show your support for our channel, please subscribe and share our content with your friends. Thanks for spending some time with us, and we hope you return.